Hello everybody, this is Dr. Nadeem and we are with Neelam Path Lectures, the Pursue series. As you are aware, all our lectures are available on YouTube. We also have a Telegram group which you can join and it is very helpful for accessing all lecture related information. We have a Google Drive where the PDF of all lectures are available. These are the disclaimers. And we are with Phase 3 which is Recorded Pathology Lectures. And today we have Pursue 21G which is Immune Disorder Session 6. And we are streaming from Ames Bhubaneswar. And today's topic is amyloidosis. And to talk on that, we have Dr. Amit Kumar Adya, who is an MD from PGI Chandigarh, a professor in the Department of Pathology and Lab Medicine, Ames Bhubaneswar. He has been the ex professor of Kalinga Institute of Medical Sciences, Bhubaneswar, with 118 publications in international and national journals, one book chapter, 600 projects, 21 years of teaching and research experience, completed five collaborative research projects funded by DBT and BRNS. Best Paper Award in IAPM 2005. With this, I would request Dr. Amit Kumar Adya to start his lecture on amyloidosis. Thank you so much. Hello, students. Welcome to the sixth lecture on immune disorders. Here, I shall talk about amyloidosis. Amyloid is an extracellular deposit of fibrillary proteins. These proteins are misfolded proteins. So they are very difficult to remove from the site where they deposited. The proteins they resemble starch, hence the name starch-like or amyloid. The effects are basically due to compression of the adjacent cells, tissue damage and functional compromise in the organs where they get deposited. Please remember that amyloid deposition is always extracellular. It's never intracellular. So it is always deposited in the interstitium spaces in between the cells and where they are deposited they get accumulated and they put pressure on the cells adjacent to them causing compression symptoms. There are 20 different types of amyloid proteins. In spite of their differences, they are chemically different but physically all the amyloid proteins they are same. The physical nature of these proteins is they are continuous non-branching fibrils with a diameter of about 7.5 to 10 nanometer. So irrespective of that chemical composition of these 20 different amyloid proteins, all of them are physically the same. The chemical composition of these proteins differ according to the disease in which they are found. We shall be discussing more about it later on. Pathogenesis of amyloid deposition. So, amyloid is basically accumulation of misfolded non-degradable proteins in intercellular spaces. These proteins are usually associated with another protein that is known as serum amyloid P protein. So, irrespective of the chemical nature of the proteins, all the proteins will have same physical character and all the proteins are associated with serum amyloid P protein. As you can see in the diagram, the native protein of these amyloid are basically non-folded proteins. Those proteins get degraded into intermediate components. These intermediate components are, they are misfolded proteins. The misfolded proteins, they assemble themselves into monomers of beta sheet structure. These monomers, they get deposited in between the cells as fibrils. Three most common situations where amyloidosis is found is depicted in the picture. And the three most common type of amyloid protein are the AL protein, AA protein and ATTR protein. The AL protein is basically seen in situations where there is an abnormal proliferation of plasma cells. The plasma cells as you know they produce immunoglobulins and immunoglobulins are composed of heavy chains and light chains. In this disorder the light chains are produced in excessive manner. This light chains they get misfolded and get deposited as AL proteins. On the other hand AA protein are deposited when in situations such as in chronic inflammations and chronic infections such as tuberculosis. The liver, it produces serum associated amyloid proteins. These amyloid proteins, they get misfolded and deposited in various sites of the body where inflammation is occurring. 
on the other hand attr protein is produced from the thyroid it's basically a mutant type of transthyretin which aggregates and gets deposited in the thyroid amyloidosis can be classified into three categories a systemic amyloidosis hereditary amyloidosis and localized amyloidosis systemic amyloidosis basically is a condition where amyloid gets deposited in multiple organs of the body and most commonly it occurs in association with multiple myeloma or chronic inflammatory conditions or chronic renal failure the condition that occurs with multiple myeloma is known as primary amyloidosis and the condition which occurs with chronic inflammatory conditions such as uh, rheumatoid arthritis and tuberculosis is known as secondary amyloidosis and the proteins that you get in primary amyloidosis is al type of protein which is basically an abnormally misfolded light chain of the immunoglobulin most commonly the light chain is lambda type there are two types of light chain if you remember one is a kappa and another is lambda so more commonly you get a lambda light chain deposition in primary amyloidosis and multiple myeloma is a disease condition where there is abnormal or tumorous or neoplastic proliferation of the plasma cells chronic inflammatory conditions give rise to secondary amyloidosis where the type of fibril protein that is deposited is aa or amyloid associated protein in chronic renal failure you get another different type of chemically different protein that is a beta 2 microglobulin protein similarly in different conditions like senile cerebral amyloidosis endocrine amyloidosis you get different types of amyloid protein deposition in the tissue so you can pause the video and go through the table multiple choice questions from this table are very common so you need to memorize and remember all the different types of proteins and things that you are you get in different types of amyloidosis from this table the difference between primary amyloidosis and secondary amyloidosis is also an another important question i have already discussed about the differences so you can go through the differences given in this table so in short primary amyloidosis is basically due to deposition of the gamma uh, type of uh, uh, sorry lambda type of light chain which get deposited in um, plasma cell disorders that is multiple myeloma or monoclonal gammopathy of undetermined significance and the common organs that are involved are heart gi tract respiratory tract skin and tongue whereas in secondary amyloidosis also known as a systemic reactive systemic amyloidosis here aa type of protein which is amyloid associated protein is deposited in various organs of the body it is usually associated with disorders such as tuberculosis bronchiectasis chronic osteomyelitis rheumatoid arthritis and other diseases like crohn's disease ulcerative colitis you will read about all these disorders later on when you uh, when you read about the systemic diseases the organs mostly involved are kidneys liver spleen lymph node adrenal and thyroid morphology of the organs in amyloidosis so gross and microscopic morphology in general as i have said amyloid gets deposited in the interstitial spaces so a deposition of something in an organ will lead to enlargement of the organ the amyloid it resembles starch so on gross it appears to be the organ appears to be enlarged and waxy in color and it it feels slightly greasy to feel and it's firm in consistency on under the microscope you will see that pink amorphous material are deposited most commonly they are deposited in the wall of the blood vessels and in and around basement membrane wherever there is basement membrane the amyloid tends to get deposited there a special stain stain known as the congo red stain is used to highlight these amyloid in the tissue on staining with congoroid it gives a salmon pink color as you can see in the uh, right side panel the upper picture shows deposition of 
salmon pink color material in and around the blood vessels if you subject the slide congo red stained slide to polarized microscopy you will find that it gives a brilliant apple green by green by refringence the picture on the right side the second one shows an apple green by refringence around the blood vessel this happens when you see the slide under polarized light this picture shows the characteristic physical nature of the of the fibrillar proteins of amyloid you see that there is a beta pleated sheet structure and the congo red stain when applied to this the congo red stain gets deposited within these sheets of beta pleat giving rise to an apple green birefringence under the polarized light if you see the uh, amyloid under electron microscope you will find that the amyloid or the fibrillary proteins are basically 7.5 to 10 nanometer diameter long fibrillary proteins kidney is very commonly affected in amyloid so affection of the kidney is known as renal amyloidosis within the kidney you will find that the amyloid is basically deposited within the glomeruli the mesangium of the glomeruli in the wall of the blood vessel and in the wall basement membrane of the renal tube tubules on doing a congo red stain you will find a salmon pink color the pink color resembles the flesh of the skin or the flesh of a salmon fish hence that name salmon pink color under polarized light you will find that the amyloid will give an apple green by refringence the color resembles the color of an green apple amyloid also gets deposited in the spleen there are two ways how amyloid gets deposited in the spleen one is known as sago spleen and another is a lardarcius spleen the sago spleen is basically when small dots of uh, amyloid gets deposited within the follicles or within the white pulp of the spleen but when the red pulp is involved it gives rise to widespread deposition of amyloid which is known as lardarcius spleen many other organs are also involved in amyloidosis the liver in the liver the amyloid gets deposited within the space of dissa and kuffer cells and sinusoids amyloid can get deposited in the tongue giving rise to what is known as a macroglossia or big tongue in the gi tract deposition of amyloid in the wall can lead to dysmotility and malabsorption in the skin it can produce small nodules or plaques in the heart it can get deposited in the myocardial muscles and giving rise to atrophy amyloid also gets deposited in the lymph nodes in alzheimer's disease amyloid proteins get deposited in the brain in amyloid neuropathy can occur if it gets deposited in the nerve carpal tunnel syndrome is a very frequent manifestation due to affection of the median nerve arthropathies can occur when it get, gets deposited in the joints so that is all about amyloidosis hope to see you in the next lecture thank you